in Greeland. He has been extremely instrumental with the LA architecture community in the organization of many events which occurred during the 70s, such as the four days in May in 74 and the four days in April in 76. Um, four days in May included the, the New York Whites. And he began the LA Architect in 1974 with Fred Lyman and the AIA. And since Mr. Lyman's resignation, he has been chairman of the editorial board. Tomorrow afternoon, um, I think at 3 o'clock at the Hilton downtown, will be a presentation of uh, the proposal done by Gruen, Kemnitzer Cotton and Vreeland, and Arthur Erickson of California Center. Um, and those, those presentations start, I think, at 8.30 or 9 in the morning and run all day. And their proposal will be uh, shown at 3 in the afternoon. May I present Tim Vreeland. I had three things written down here that I wanted to say right off. The first is I am not Jorge Silvetti, in case anyone hasn't caught on to that yet. The second is I'm not going to talk about my own work. And uh, the third is that the lecture is a long one, covering the work of uh, 10 architects in six different cities. So uh, if you can put up with those three disclaimers, we're off. <laughs> this good? Look, let's flatten it out. There. Can you hear me? Um, how did how did all of this come about? I mean, how did uh, what I've come here to speak about this evening come about? Uh, I, I think it was back in 1974. I was uh, a visiting teacher. University of Texas in Austin, and by accident I chanced on a book uh, which I'd never seen before by Henry Russell Hitchcock called Modern Architecture, uh, Romanticism and Reintegration. Uh, I've always loved Hitchcock's writing, and uh, I fell on this avidly, uh, and discovered a group of architects, or discovered, uh, let's say, the truth about a group of architects whom I only slightly knew before, but uh, uh, whose work and whose personalities uh, Hitchcock um, uh, gave great life to in this particular book. Uh, just briefly, uh, the book was written in 1929, uh, and this, of course, is a really sort of watershed year uh, because uh, most of the canonical works of the modern movement had been built by then or were in the process of construction 1929, of course, was the uh, year of the uh, exposition in Barcelona. Um, but this also allowed Hitchcock to be completely familiar with the work of an earlier generation, those architects at the beginning of the century, um, whose work has largely, uh, has, has largely paled and, and um, um, been obscured by the, by the great brilliance of, uh, of the modern architects who came after the uh, First World War. Uh, what I'd like to do this evening uh, is take another look uh, at the work of the early 20th century architects, European architects in this case, uh, and to use Hitchcock's book essentially as the uh, lens uh, through which to see it uh, because of his uh, real understanding of, of what these men achieved. Um, the names of these men, most of them are familiar to you. I think the, the thing that, uh, that struck me in reading Hitchcock's book uh, is that we've, at least I in my, in my schooling, had always been taught that these men were important because basically they were precursors or gave birth to the important men who followed them. And I'm talking about Mackintosh or Wagner or Berlager or Behrens and, and a host of others that I'll talk about this evening. Uh, and in fact, uh, this is patently unfair to them when you actually examine their work. Uh, it's always unfair to, to judge someone because he was the father of someone who came later who was famous 
And in this case, certainly their work deserves to be looked at uh, for itself. Uh, and and uh, 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 the fact that they were followed by uh, the, the, the modern architects whom we admire very much was, was uh, to some extent an accident. Uh, Hitchcock calls these men of the beginning of this century the new tradition in architecture. Uh, new in the sense that they followed the older tradition, they renewed the older tradition, uh, and, and uh, nevertheless stood clearly within it. Uh, they had not broken with uh, the tradition in architecture as the men who followed them clearly did. Uh, when Corbusier produced Une Architecture, oh, clear, clearly his intention was to break with the past. Uh, Hitchcock characterizes this new tradition uh, in the following way. He says, the new tradition in architecture appeared as soon as architects turned from the eclecticism of taste to the eclecticism of style. And by this he means he's distinguishing between the revivals of the 19th century, which is an eclecticism of taste, uh, and pointing out that, the, that these architects uh, had learned by the beginning of the, by the turn of the century a form of eclecticism which allowed them to borrow freely from all periods and actually blend several styles within the same building. And as he said, to do it so subtly uh, that, uh, the, that the people of their time uh, uh, the, 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 uh, actually saw what they had done as a modern architecture. To us, of course, it does not, it won't appear modern, uh, but, but it did to them. Uh, from the beginning, the founders of the new tradition in various countries succeeded in blending their borrowing so subtly and in so prominently incorporating with their architecture the finest craftsmanship in building, as well as to some extent contemporary methods of engineering. Now both of these were very important. The, the reintroduction of fine craftsmanship in architecture uh, and the uh, uh, incorporating of the new engineering. Uh, that the building, that the public was persuaded that no reminiscence of the, of, uh, of the past existed at all. And uh, th these men were called um, modernists. All right, could I, we have the first slides. Now, what, after, after um, reading this book and uh, doing some investigation uh, of the works of these people, lecturing at UCLA, I, I became uh, so interested in, in, in their work uh, that I was determined to get to know it firsthand. And last October, I went to Europe and uh, in a very rapid trip, literally in three weeks, I visited six different cities and looked at the work of these 10 different architects. And what I'll do this evening is show you their work as I discovered it. In other words, the order that uh, I, I'm showing the work this evening basically is the order in which I saw these buildings. Since most of the work was done uh, roughly, we'll say, between 1900 and, we'll say, 1914, the First World War, some of it lapsed a little over, some of it is a little earlier than that, but it's all done within about a 15 year period. Uh, 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 it, it, the, 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 there is no, no particular chronological order uh, in, in which to present this. The, the first of these architects, uh, the first city I went to uh, in October was Glasgow. And I went to, of course, to see the work of Charles Rennie McIntosh, uh, um, whose picture you see up here, and, and a kind of logo uh, which characterizes uh, uh, the, 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 the aesthetic which he and his wife, Margaret, Margaret MacDonald, uh, uh, developed uh, in this sort of remote uh, city of Glasgow, completely out of the center of things, uh, and, and, and produced an architecture which uh, became admired all over Europe, and particularly, of course, by the Austrian secessionists whose work we will look at last. Uh, before he was 28, he was chosen to design the new buildings for the Glasgow School of Art, uh, which is a remarkably bold choice and was due to the principal, Francis Newbery. Uh, the design uh, date actually starts in 1878, but the building was not completed until 1899. Uh, I try to show it in context of the, of the city of Glasgow, this sort of northern Scottish city, uh, uh, enormous, well, uh, 
heavy stone buildings, uh, uh, a hilly site, uh, the, the school itself set up on one of the h highest points in, in the city of Glasgow. You climb to it, uh, and here I approached it down this street and, and, uh, and, you s and saw it uh, just as you're seeing it here. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the west elevation, uh, the east elevation, excuse me, the, the east elevation, uh, uh, rather, rather simple, uh, 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 just, just a few uh, window openings in it, and now coming, uh, which you can see in detail in the side on the left, coming around then to the front uh, where the stone is, is more finished, uh, the uh, wonderful uh, ability that Macintosh has, and actually quite a few of these architects had, to, uh, to, de to design an, a, a facade of a building, a front entrance to a building uh, which has all of the uh, 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 qualities, the formal qualities of a symmetrically planned building without actually being symmetrical. The, the wonderful ability to simply to juxtapose things. The, the door which is on center has three uh, large studio windows on one side and four large studios on the other, windows on, on, the, on, on the other side. Uh, the, 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 the door is clearly located through the, 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 the sort of center, uh, heavy stone centerpiece in, in which it's carved. Uh, not a single feature is derived from any period styles. Uh, the front's extremely simple, it's austere, and, and unbroken upright lines prevail even in the railings in the front of the buildings. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, this uh, style that, that uh, Macintosh uh, develops, uh, which combines uh, the, 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 a, a very utilitarian and straightforward uh, approach to, to, to simply the building problem of designing a, 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 a school of art full of, of large studios with great uh, north light windows uh, and playing off against that these uh, delightful uh, 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 elliptical uh, curves of all kinds to, to give it uh, to give it a liveliness uh, that drawing I, I try to introduce as frequently as I can in this lecture uh, drawings by the architect himself, an earlier version of the Glasgow School of Art showing basically how, the, how he set it up. He set it up uh, almost like, um, uh, like a sheet of music uh, w with, with, with certain horizontal and, and vertical lines going through it, probably related to, to the street on which the building's built, and against which then he plays uh, the curves particularly of the, of the, of the various uh, uh, gables at the top of the building. Uh, in these slides, we're now coming around to the west wall of the building, uh, which is po possibly the most dramatic. You can see the north wall in its entirety in this shot. Uh, and now, as we slip down the street, you can see that it, it does, uh, the, 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 the street falls away sharply at this point. Uh, you can see possibly the best known uh, elevation of, of this particular building. Uh, the library, uh, which, which is high up on the uh, west wall, uh, behind those three uh, projecting oriel windows with the uh, great uh, peaked gable above it, and the entrance, which you can see here on the right, which is the entrance to the theater, the, uh, a small th uh, uh, amphitheater uh, on, on the, uh, uh, just below the main floor of, of the building and uh, on the side street. Look at the uh, uh, l look at the, the, at the at the at the ornament that uh, Macintosh develops there to 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 to, to enhance and and to to to, to um, underline the, the, the that particular opening. And here, going further down the street, uh, you can see the real drama of this elevation. The whole uh, side of the building uh, rears up very high, like a, like a great tower. Uh, and, and uh, the, the, the wonderful imaginative, imaginativeness of, of, of the uh, uh, window arrangements which he puts in, in these walls in which the stone gradually becomes uh, uh, less preciously handled as he, as he goes around toward the back, giving the, the building decidedly a front and a back. Uh, in uh, simply to, to uh, show you the straightforwardness of his plan, 
Uh, if you look over on the left, you can see the uh, entrance floor up at the top uh, with the large studios all, all along the corridor. Uh, and you, uh, directly below it, you can see where the small amphitheater is uh, on, on, uh, over on the top right-hand corner. Um, the, uh, this, I think the thing that's most satisfying ab about so many of these buildings which I saw, and certainly true of this one, is that uh, a school which opened in 1899 in this building uh, is still the Glasgow School of Art and is still as active as it was when, when in fact, they've made additions to it. It's fully used, the studios are used just the way Macintosh intended them to be. Going inside the building then, this main wooden staircase which takes you up to what's called the museum at the top, uh, lit by this uh, skylight with these wonderful um, uh, uh, curved, uh, uh, carved wooden trusses above. And uh, Macintosh's uh, uh, handling of the whole business stair railings, keeping that horizontal line uh, 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 at, at various levels all the way up uh, and, and, and just filling in with these, these uh, 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 vertical rectangular spindles uh, between them to, to give a very satisfying uh, balanced uh, cage-like uh, uh, containment for the stair. Uh, the only slide I was able to make of the library is, is on the left uh, and you can see it compared to what was probably a contemporary photo at, at uh, pretty much the time it was opened, uh, which, which um, I slip in here just from, from some history book. Uh, uh, this is possibly the best known space in the Glasgow School of Art. Uh, the, the, this particular almost constructivist arrangement of column and beams which supports the mezzanine above uh, comes about, of course, because the, uh, the, 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 those, those columns had to purchase on columns which were directly below them and on third points in the floor. Uh, however, uh, Macintosh wanted to move the balcony rail back in order to create more space at, and, and light uh, at the center of his library, uh, giving this really uh, unusual, uh, I, what I call constructivist uh, look to, to, to that whole structure. Uh, here are two of the studios. The walls between the, uh, on the left, uh, 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 a standard studio in the Glasgow School of Art, the walls are actually hung. Uh, so, so that, that they can be moved. Uh, uh, Macintosh was a very practical designer in that sense that the uh, divisions between the studios could easily be demounted uh, and moved one way or the other or taken down completely uh, as they were non-structural. Uh, on the right, I think it's called the composition room, a studio very high, I think probably the, the most splendid of all the studios, very high in the building. As you can see, it's toward the top because of the skylight. Uh, and the wonderful sort of uh, uh, whitewashed or white painted uh, uh, stone wall w uh, behind that, of course, or on the other side of that is the is the west facade that we looked at. Uh, just some details from from this building. Uh, the the those arches uh, forming that gallery are, are toward the top, uh, and and allow passage across the top. Uh, those two little, uh, those three little projecting uh, uh, bow windows uh, are also on that level. Uh, uh, there was something called a hen's run, uh, which which uh, Macintosh added to the back of the building uh, in order to to uh, to uh, uh, to actually get passage from one side to the other, uh, which, which is beyond uh, 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 those arched openings on the left. Uh, I went. Then uh, outside of um, Glasgow, uh, to Helensburg, uh, along the Clyde, to visit Hill House, his, one of his best known houses, uh, done in 1902 uh, within what was known as the Scottish baronial tradition, uh, which I don't think one's terribly aware of. I, I found that, that the whole aesthetic, his whole sense of form uh, in this house to me had possibly more of a, of a storybook quality than whatever Scottish baronial is. Uh, the marvelous, firstly, it's all made of this, um, uh, uh, I think it's called harling. It's a stucco with a very coarse uh, pebble aggregate in it uh, with a sort of silver gray color. Everything is that color on the outside. And simply the wonderful way that he's handled this wall which surrounds the property 
uh, which inflects upward uh, to, to announce the gateway and then inflects beyond the gateway upward once more uh, to form the gable end of a small dependency uh, on uh, probably Gardner's cottage or potting shed or something on the outside. And then behind it, the house itself. Now, this whole sort of tapered design, uh, the, the, the sort of batter of the walls and the narrowing uh, of, of forms as they go upward, uh, uh, was fairly consistently practiced by, by these architects at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, interestingly. And um, uh, 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 it was certainly a favored device of, of Macintosh's. The, the only change in the texture of the, f firstly, it's, it's completely a house in the English house tradition uh, in that it, it has uh, steeply pitched roofs and has very prominent uh, chimneys and so forth, uh, uh, which, which uh, was that quality which was so much admired on the continent and which was written about uh, by people such as Mutasius uh, and became a kind of model for domestic architecture in, in, in uh, uh, Europe at that time. Uh, the, the entrance door then, which is where the stone, uh, which actually has stone surrounds. Uh, and then a view of the house compared to a Macintosh's own drawing. Uh, not very different, but always interesting to see how the, the architect visualized uh, what his house would look. And here, the sort of storybook quality of it, the almost sort of children sort of uh, storybook uh, uh, attitude to, to, toward the house, I think becomes very clear just in the way he renders it, in the way he delineates it, in the, in the way he shows that uh, sort of never-never land uh, of, 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 uh, foliage and, 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 uh, and, and uh, uh, trees and shrubs around the house. Or let's say what's important to him, the carriage, the, very, the division, subdivision of the glass into small rectangles or squares, which again was fairly consistently practiced by most of these architects. Uh, then a series of uh, just simply walking around the house to show the, the, this sort of very picturesque massing where it never appears the same twice as you move around it, uh, the various gable ends, these, these uh, sort of uh, turrets, uh, uh, that wonderful space up there which I was not allowed to go up into. I think it was the nursery up on the roof so that the children could run out and actually look out uh, in three directions through, th through that uh, uh, glass just up there by the chimney. Uh, and finally, two shots uh, from, from, from another side, uh, showing how, how uh, um, in motion the house is as, as, as you move around it. The, if you look at the right-hand slide, uh, you'll notice that uh, on the right side of the building is projecting forward a, 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 a wing which has a, a, a semicircular end to it. That contains the staircase to the second floor those high windows light that staircase, and uh, we'll see that from the inside. Uh, here you can see the, now, these are very characteristic, uh, and uh, th this has all been put in, in almost into its original condition, uh, characteristic Macintosh interiors, uh, the, the, the floor uh, designed either by him or his wife. They, they work together uh, on, on, on these projects. Uh, the, uh, the paneling, the, the very simple, uh, paneling which he uses, usually very dark, uh, black in, in, in color to contrast with the white of the plaster, and then the use of these uh, repeated, uh, this repeated carriage or small uh, rectangular or square openings. That was the entrance to the staircase. The library, which is right at the entrance, you see on the left, uh, and uh, the fireplace in the living room, uh, you, you see on the right. Uh, an interesting device, which I think was very successful, is very successful. Uh, in, uh, he tends uh, to use uh, his paneling up to a certain height, which is about door height, uh, and that line, which then becomes a kind of cornice, which goes all around the room, uh, contains within it closets, in this case bookcases, the top of the sort of mantelpiece or fireplace, and then above that, then the white plaster becomes a, a real kind of sky, uh, which lifts up and usually has um, uh, is usually curved, it has a curved cove to it, which gives a great sort of lightness and, and size to the room. Uh, the bedroom, the bed itself under, under this uh, wonderful sort of vaulted ceiling, uh, uh, and the, the other end of the bedroom, which you can see in, in the other slide with the, with the closets, which, uh, uh, which d 
designed, of course, by him. Uh, that famous chair, that high ladderback chair of, of, uh, of, of Macintosh's, uh, probably designed for one of the tea rooms. And, uh, and whatever this piece of this mirror, which you can see right on the right-hand side of this slide, uh, th all of these pieces, uh, all, all of this furnishing, all of this design, then became uh, uh, was taken up very quickly by the by the uh, continental Europeans, particularly the Austrian secessionists. It, w it they were the designs were published uh, and 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 widely imitated, and Macintosh himself was invited to act actually uh, do. Um, to to uh, present to to, to exhibit uh, uh, at one of the uh, secession um, exhibitions. Uh, this is a church, uh, which actually is the headquarters for the Macintosh Society, uh, and again you notice his his treatment of stone, the wonderful sort of um, uh, uh, carving, modeling of, of the stone, almost as, uh, handled in a kind of soft way. Uh, the, 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 with this very original um, uh, ornament in it, and then always this sort of tendency to taper toward the top, the narrowing of it, the whole thing sort of aspiring upward and, and getting smaller at the top. Uh, this, I think, was possibly my favorite. Uh, this is the Scotland Street School, uh, seen on the left in a, in a side which is probably contemporary with its actual completion, and on the right in a side which I took, uh, uh, wonderfully uh, uh, straightforward, very little ornament on it at all, uh, uh, still completely usable as a school, though it happened to be closed uh, when, uh, when I was there, uh, with these two projecting semicircular uh, staircases, uh, his preferred form for stair landings and used, as you saw earlier, on the Hill House and used in this school in a double case. And then notice the, uh, on the, on the left-hand slide there how to the right then of the, uh, of the glazed uh, uh, staircase uh, structure, uh, the, 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 the individual floors actually step back and give that um, uh, sort of cus whatever it was called, uh, that, that receding or, or, or stepped back floors uh, 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 along the two outside flanks. And then a view inside. Uh, uh, very straightforward, with just a touch of, 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 of ornament, just in these sort of black, uh, narrow black tiles which have been put on the corner. Um, and then views up, here is the staircase, this is what it looks like, really, I think, superb uh, use of, of glass with a very narrow uh, stone mullions hol holding it together. And uh, the, the space itself, uh, just uh, 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 free from top, from, from, from the bottom to the top, so that from each landing you can look right, right up through it. And then finally, Macintosh at the end of his life, uh, where uh, through a lack of commissions, he was really forced into idleness and he spent the last part of his life uh, doing uh, watercolors, a superb set of watercolors, which, which um, uh, are now available in, 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 in book form and, and uh, are pro possibly the most eloquent statement uh, to, to uh, Macintosh's uh, sensitivity to form. From uh, Glasgow then, I went uh, back, in, back to England and in the country outside of London, I went to visit several buildings by Edwin Lutyens, whom you see here looking like Fred Astaire in his younger years. Uh, he was, uh, uh, Lutyens is very interesting character. He was essentially self-educated. Uh, uh, he was the, uh, a younger child in a rather large family. Uh, his father had been a soldier and uh, who had turned painter, and I believe he painted racehorses uh, for a living. It was, uh, 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 he, uh, he was always uh, uh, talented, but never actually did, uh, got very much formal uh, training. Um, uh, he admired enormously a neighbor of theirs, a man called Randolph Caldicott, who illustrated uh, uh, poems and children's stories, uh, largely with scenes of merry old England, of coaching inns and, and, and so forth, uh, which gave Lutyens then a desire to, uh, to, to, in a sense, recreate that old England uh, of uh, half-timbered uh, uh, houses and coaching inns and so forth. 
And essentially, the early part of his practice uh, w was, was devoted uh, uh, very successfully to this. He uh, sketched uh, very quickly and easily. And on the right, you can see a sketch, which he did at some point in his career to illustrate to the draftsman in his office how he wanted a chimney handle, uh, 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 how it and, and marking the points A, B, C, and D. Uh, it seems to me just in a very few lines, he captures completely the character of, 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 of a certain type of chimney he wants on this particular building. Uh, he was, um, his, his genius was, was discovered very early by um, an older woman, Gertrude Jekyll, one of England's leading landscape uh, uh, architects, uh, and she uh, uh, brought him in, into collaboration with her uh, on, on many projects and gave him his first opportunities uh, to design houses while she did the gardens for, for her fairly wealthy uh, uh, patron, patronage or patrons. Uh, the first house that I went to visit was the Deanery Gardens in Sonning. Um, this was built in 1900 and uh, Hitchcock says of it, in the Deanery Gardens, Lutchens may almost be said to have built all unwittingly the finest house of the new tradition. It's surely one of the finest pieces of traditional craftsmanship produced in the 20th century. The quality of the plain brickwork and the plain oak beams at the great bay window, the line, the fine balance of the irregular masses, the skill displayed in the entrance arch of the many brick orders and architectural features suggestive but not imitative of the past, the perfect adaptation of the plan to contemporary life have hardly been equaled. This is the house that, uh, about which in 1929 Hitchcock said this. Uh, you see it from how it looks from the street, rather unpromising, just a, just a hole in the wall. Apparently at one time it probably was a deanery. It's now a private house uh, seen from the garden side and now seen up closer. Uh, here's the, 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 this very simple device of these uh, sort of telescoped, uh, uh, simple uh, arch, in, incised arches that he uses to, to, to give emphasis to, the, to, to this garden uh, uh, door, and the, uh, the big uh, bay window of, of, of really very fine uh, 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 carpentry, timber work, uh, which Lutchens learned to do by, by studying uh, the older vernacular buildings uh, in, in the country ar ar around where he lived. Uh, essentially, he revived the, 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 the craft of, 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 of this fine timber work and also of the fine brickwork that you see here. Um, the garden, which it's, though small, is enormously effective, which uh, stretches alongside the house and appears to emanate from this bridge, uh, this raised terrace, which, which comes from the, uh, from the garden door with, the, with this rail down to, the, down to it, uh, which of course is, is partially the work of Gertrude Jekyll. Uh, here you see the garden with a wonderful stone-lined uh, uh, canal which leads uh, down the, the, the length of it. Uh, you can see the sort of semicircular pool with the um, um, almost sort of grotto like uh, arch uh, in, in, in into, into which it's into which it's been shoved, and here the canal uh, uh, finally issues into this circular pool uh, with these uh, steps going up it. And notice behind the steps, then uh, just as you, uh, at, the, at the landing, just as you move uh, beyond these hedges into the into the back part of the garden, uh, he has a composition there made of hoops and chains, hoops and chains alternating to give him uh, this, this uh, sort of uh, constantly sort of reversing curve. Uh, he, he was full of, of this kind of inventiveness. The, the uh, gardens, uh, which he collaborated on with Gertrude Jekyll, uh, are, are wonderfully geometric. Just to, he, he loved circular forms, semicircular forms. They're, they're all done uh, very clearly. Uh, here you can see at the end of what I call the bridge, uh, which comes from the, from the garden door. This also I issues onto a, a series of, of um, concentric uh, uh, semicircular steps uh, leading down into a lower garden. Uh, and here along the, uh, that narrow flank at the other end of the garden, uh, there's, a, there's a, it must be some kind of um, a conservatory uh, using uh, uh, wood, 
uh, almost sort of gothic-like uh, uh, wood tracery. Now notice how flat he keeps the wall and how the, the brick, uh, the, 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 uh, he, he uses in the normal size brick, he introduces a very thin flat brick which uses, for instance, right at the, at the, at the bottom of the eaves on, on the left hand side here, or as a, as a slight um, um, uh, sill, a uh, curved sill of, over the window, or as a long horizontal sill uh, 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 over the lower windows down here. But the, so much of the effectiveness of this new traditionalist architecture comes from the willingness to keep the wall as flat as possible with just the slightest uh, breaks in, the, in, in its plane. Uh, moving around to the other side then, some, some very fine half timber work uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at that gable end. And here, possibly the most one of the most interesting aspects of the house, this arched opening uh, and the arch itself uh, emphasized w uh, with w what appears almost, almost to be a kind of sunburst of these very thin bricks uh, which then radiate out from the voussoirs of the arch. You're looking back then through that iron gate and through that archway uh, into a courtyard, which is actually the entrance courtyard. It's what you come into when you come in off the street, and you can see a statue back there. The, uh, on the left-hand slide, there, there is a, a, a row of windows which actually light the staircase, which we'll look at right away. Uh, now, back in that courtyard, it's a small courtyard, but it gives the feeling of, of great size uh, it must have something to do with just the, uh, with the s uh, simplicity and lack of detailing uh, th and, and, and the boldness of, 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 the, uh, of the vaults and of the arches. These vaults made of two colors of stone, of chalk and, 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 and some kind of, and, and of the brick, uh, a device which he used in, in other buildings. And the marvelous way he handles the chimney breast and then the, chimney, the chimneys themselves, which then turn uh, which twist at 45 degrees above that to separate them themselves from the, from the wall. Uh, there's the actual uh, entrance door that you come into off the street, in, into that vaulted space. And notice again that the marvelous way in which the windows are handled, they're pushed right up uh, to the bottom of the eaves of, of the roof. This is on the, on the left-hand side. And they're kept in, in a continuous band, uh, a, a continuous horizontal band. Uh, the plan of the house you see here, it's basically very simple. It's, it's just three sides around a, around a courtyard. Uh, and here's the staircase, the wonderful Newell staircase. Uh, Lutchen's always preferred Newell staircases. Uh, uh, we don't use Newell staircases much anymore. Uh, I've been experimenting them uh, with them in a, in a building I've been doing for Santa Barbara Museum of Art. I, I, I like it very much just as a, both in terms of rugged construction and, and also because of the simplicity of how the railing can be handled, which is so much more difficult if you have a, a, a continuous handrail. Uh, and here the, the space, the central space in the uh, in the house uh, behind that great uh, wooden glass bay window that you've seen. Uh, a of course, a lot of, it, uh, a lot of what you're looking at is due to the present owner and, and his particular taste uh, in, in, in curtains. The original pictures of this house were much simpler than, than you see right here. Uh, very, very fine uh, uh, timber work, uh, timber trusses. It's, it's a great baronial hall, basically, is what it is, uh, reaching up through two stories. And uh, at some point in the life of the house, one of, the, uh, one of these half-timbered uh, walls, which forms the side wall of the hall, was actually opened up, as you can see on the right-hand slide, and to create a kind of uh, music gallery. And in fact, there is a smaller sitting room with a piano back there. And here in the upper, here you can see where that is. You can see that piano, and you're looking back into the room. Uh, in, in a, in a, uh, the, the corridor in the upper part of the house also uh, has that uh, has the, the same kind of carb, carved uh, uh, timber work as as, um, uh, as, as he uses uh, in, in the great hall, and just details of of the wood paneling, uh, uh, almost a kind of linen fold wood paneling, very simple, uh, and and uh, a, a 
really in, in excellent condition, oak undoubtedly. And I love his fireplaces, uh, which become very complex. Notice that there's a, there's a wooden mantelpiece is, is placed uh, a, across an, an arched um, a fireplace opening, but in fact it's a coal grate which is inserted inside the larger opening. So it has the efficiency of a, of a, of a coal burning stove, but it has the magnificence of a, of a, of a larger fireplace. Uh, the bathroom and the bedroom, just uh, giving some idea of, of just what the, the sort of Edwardian accommodations w are. Uh, the second house of Lutchens is Folly Farm, uh, which uh, Hitchcock uh, finds equally good, and it's done about the same period. This is actually it's done a little later. The original house, which you're looking at here, uh, which was a small uh, 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 classical house, symmetrical, uh, with, a, with a long uh, tank extending in front of it, was done in 1906 uh, uh, in, 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 in what he called the Grand Manor. He was then asked by the owner, uh, six years later, in 1912, to add to it. And so he went back in history and, and made the addition, uh, used uh, f a, a much earlier uh, medieval style uh, for the addition. Uh, and in order to, to, to clearly separate the, the small sort of formal original house uh, from the much uh, larger, more rambling uh, addition to the house, he actually drops the level of the garden. Uh, he extends this long roof uh, and then places a tank of water uh, uh, between the two, so that actually in, in the joint between the, 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 the uh, new wing and the, and the, and the old house uh, is, is w what, what he calls a cloister, uh, these great buttresses of brick coming down, the roof spilling down almost to, to, to the water's edge, at least very low. Um, here, back in that cloister space, the, the, just to get some of the quality of the, of the brickwork. And then on the left-hand side, you can see the uh, transition in, in, in garden level, the raised garden, uh, part of the older house, and then the new garden uh, 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 set down about, about four or five feet. Uh, in the new addition, then, the master bedroom has this porch which sticks out. It, firstly, it has that great uh, uh, chimney coming up alongside it. And then there's, a, there's a, a, a porch which you can step out of from the bedroom, uh, 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 which forms this, this arched uh, entry, to the, entry to the garden. Uh, and and uh, the, when you look, when you get inside this and look under it, you, uh, notice the way he's done the whole floor of that porch to keep it always dry. It's, it's done really, I would think this is very much the kind of thing that's done on the deck of a ship so that the water can run right through uh, just in, in, an, in an open woodwork uh, with this great beam then that comes through to support it all, uh, which is then uh, cleated on the outside of, 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 of the brick wall. Uh, the, in the original part of the house, uh, which you can see in the top of the left-hand slide, uh, the entrance off the, there's a small square garden uh, uh, with an entrance off the street. You come across that square garden and you come into a central entrance, but because this is inconvenient to the plan, uh, he's devised this wonderful sort of elliptical or eye-shaped uh, uh, lobby that you, the entrance that you come into, which actually diverts you. Uh, uh, to one side and brings you in the back of, that's why they, they, in a sense this entranceway is disappearing uh, from, from, from eyesight in, in the, in, in the right-hand slide, uh, uh, puts you behind the living room and then uh, 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 allows you then to, to not, um, uh, uh, well, it, it's just part of, 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 of Lutchen's skill uh, in, 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 in handling uh, the differences that may have to occur between how the house appears on the outside and how it has to function on the inside. Uh, and just other aspects of this house. This used to be the billiard room on the right. It's now used for ping pong. But it has a, a very fine, uh, again, glass, great glass wall of, 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 of timber and glass uh, and of half, half timbering. Uh, tile hanging all along one side. Uh, you can see on the left-hand slide. Uh, this tile hanging is interesting because it was a device revi revived by Richard Norman Shaw and used 
in a lot of his Queen Anne uh, houses, which in our, in our own uh, country became, uh, beca basically became the shingles uh, of people like uh, Henry Hobson Richardson. Uh, we substituted for the tile uh, uh, wood shingles because they're more native to us. And, uh, uh, but the use of tile on a vertical surface uh, I saw a lot of in Europe, and you'll see it later on, uh, particularly among the Dutch architects. Uh, and then f uh, finally some views of the buttery, the circular uh, building at the end, and th this masterful uh, play of roofs, uh, of Lutchen's loved roofs and really handled them extremely well, could bring roofs of all shapes and sizes together in some kind of uh, 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 considered form. And then a last look at, uh, at Folly Farm uh, with its great chimneys dominating the countryside that it's in. On the right-hand side, one of the many gardens at Folly Farms, I think the, these are called Dutch gardens, these completely geometric uh, gardens. It's a series of, 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 of circles, um, um, uh, w in, in this case with an actual island in the middle. I believe that the, it, it, the uh, analogy is to, is to a flower uh, and, and uh, to, the, to, to the patterns which, uh, uh, which flowers make. And then Lutchen's at the end of his life uh, with one of his grandchildren. And uh, that was supposed to be, uh, that was possibly the sketch he was drawing. It's, a, it's, it's upside down, but it was a castle, uh, which obviously was a favorite theme of Lutchen's. He did two castles in his career, Castle Bogo and um, Lindisfarne. Uh, and, and again, we notice, if it were the right way up, uh, this sort of tapering form, this, this form which gets narrower toward the top. I hope all of them are upside down. Uh, we, now, we now move to Holland, to, to Amsterdam, and uh, where I went to see the work of the Amsterdam School, but principally of its founder, H.P. Uh, Berlager, uh, who at the end of the last century won a competition to design the new uh, exchange building. Uh, it was an international competition. Otto Wagner competed in it. Berlager being a, uh, uh, won it, and then uh, proceeded to spend about 20 years uh, uh, redesigning this building and, and completing it. Um, Hitchcock says of it, it marked more than any other monument the appearance of the full new tradition in Europe for a number of reasons I hope I can make clear. I'm sorry that these drawings aren't the right way around, but uh, basically uh, uh, they in some ways show Berlager's method of design, uh, and also the, num the, the, the numerous attempts he made at designing the tower, which is prominent, which forms the, 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 the major corner of the building. Uh, here are two drawings. One of the, uh, one of the earlier designs, which is, is fully in a kind of Romanesque revival style, reminding one possibly of Richardson, uh, 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 rather, rather complicated and ornate. Uh, and the final version, uh, which is enormously chastened and has the qualities that Berlager felt was important in, in the new architecture that he was trying to produce. The, um, the, uh, he believed in, 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 in three principles, which he passed on to his followers. The first was the primacy of space, uh, by which he meant the interior spaces within the building env envelope. Uh, and this space then was defined by walls the importance of walls uh, as creators of form. Uh, and, and in his case, the, the walling is, is, is load-bearing, uh, made of brick. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this possibly becomes the, the, the most, the, the clearest, uh, the, the best expressed uh, feature of this building. It is a building of brick walls and of beautiful brick walls. Uh, and his third principle was one of uh, need for systematic proportion. Berlaga believed very much uh, in, in uh, uh, a geometry, Ti he wrote uh, or said, time alters fashion, but that which is founded on geometry and real science will remain unalterable. It speculated that actually it was one of Berlager's lectures on his geometric proportioning method that interested uh, Le Corbusier, who heard it sufficiently to, uh, so that Le Corbusier himself became uh, concerned and, and uh, eventually developed his own uh, proportionate and geometric system. Uh, here is the building as it actually stands right in the heart of Amsterdam today. Uh, it's, 
it's by far the, if not the largest, the most impressive building. It sort of holds Amsterdam together. And notice again the, the quality, firstly, the very fine quality of the brickwork, but also the, the, uh, the emphasis placed on the wall itself by making the wall as flat as possible uh, with a a stripping, uh, at least by late 19th, early 20th century standards, as much of the ornament away, almost as if the whole wall surface were planed, anything that would, uh, would, would, uh, uh, would project beyond the wall surface uh, seems to have gotten uh, planed back and is flat with the wall surface. Uh, the tower is, 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 is completely within the plane of the wall. Uh, here, the entrance to this, this building contains three major spaces. There's the, the, uh, the stock exchange, the produce exchange, and the corn exchange, I believe. Uh, this is the main entrance and also the entrance to the, to the stock exchange. Uh, that large window at the top actually has behind it the meeting uh, place for the um, um, Chamber of Commerce, I, th I think. The for the city. Walk, moving then down, it's a long building, moving down this, this principal street in Amsterdam, uh, uh, what could be actually a, a, a rather boring wall. You can see the tower at the corner. Uh, the, the wonderful, in spite of, it, of its f flatness and plainer quality, Berlager uh, has uh, uh, kept the varied silhouette from that earlier version uh, uh, but 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 done it uh, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, much more more disciplined way than all of those sort of crockets and spires that he and and and, and orioles and and uh, um, dormers that he'd originally planned here d d done again in a single plane but but with enough uh, interest and variety both in the in the silhouette at, at at the top of the wall but also just in the penetrations in the wall the the um, uh, various arched openings of uh, uh, and, and the handling of the windows. Coming down then to the other corner, or let's say looking at both corners at once, as you can see here, along that wall, uh, how he's pierced the wall with large arched openings, and then introduced the stairs and these stone stair rails uh, as the main floor is, is several feet above the street, again in the plane of the wall, just to, to, to add interest and a kind of asymmetry to the uh, to, the, to the arched opening. And then around to the back of the building, uh, uh, notice again how this piece of sculpture, which he uses at the corner to give emphasis and strength to the corner, is again held back within the, uh, within the plane of the wall. The sculptor was instructed not to allow any part of his, uh, of his uh, sculpture to pr protrude beyond the, what would be the plane of the wall if it were extended. And here, seen from the back then, you're actually looking at the back of the corn exchange and the produce exchange. Uh, one of these two spaces, I don't know which, is recessed and forms a kind of courtyard, which again gives a, an interest uh, and, and, and variety to the back of it. This actually overlooks a canal. It's actually water directly uh, outside of. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of the building is this street, which is, in a sense, a back street. And because the site is irregular, it's actually uh, a, a trapezoid, a long, narrow trapezoid, uh, he had to reconcile certain things here, uh, uh, which did not appear on the other three facades. Uh, and, and as the wall, uh, as, the, as the street uh, narrows, or rather as the building narrows toward the back, uh, what he's done is he's carried the plane of the wall back to that uh, elevated section with the, with the, with the tower, with a tower in it, and here, uh, in these three arches, he's combined the, the, uh, the, the, the two different uh, wall planes, which are at slight angles to each other, one of them normal to the street, and the other, uh, uh, the, 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 the other set at an angle, so that you can actually see one of the walls uh, inside the other. Through the archway, you can actually see the, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, splayed wall. Uh, as the arches get deeper. Uh, and here, the, here you can see the building in plan. You can see what I was describing in the top left-hand side, uh, uh, how he's handled the three chambers. And this is the, the, this is the stock exchange, the large space uh, with its big uh, metal uh, trusses and, and glass roof. So that though the building is, is medieval in, in a sense, 
uh, in, 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 let's say in, in its reminiscence, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Berlage has, 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 has uh, at least for, for, for his contemporaries, modernized it, uh, both in terms of glazing the roof and also just in the, in the, in the chastening of the, of the whole handling uh, of the wall and, the, and of the stone ornament inserted in the wall. Now, uh, here's Berlager uh, in the center in that photo surrounded by his um, uh, disciples and, and people who worked with him in his office. Uh, he essentially uh, gave impetus to a whole school of younger men uh, who followed him, who more or less transformed Amsterdam. They were the Amsterdam school. Uh, Berlager, I've never seen a monument to an architect before in a city. That's why I took that photograph on the right. Uh, there is Berlager standing up in a town square. Uh, it, 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 I'm not sure there are any other examples. Of, uh, but at least in one case, an architect was so admired that the, that the citizens of the town in which he worked erected a monument to him. The younger men who worked for Berlager, uh, one of them was uh, Michael de Klerk, uh, and he was uh, probably the most brilliant. Uh, he took uh, Berlager's brickwork uh, as, as a starting point. On the basis of Berlager's rationalism uh, and his dependence on fine brickwork, de Klerk developed a highly personal style which became at once very popular with the younger generation of architects in Holland. And this is really the work for which uh, the Amsterdam School is best known. The work of the, they call themselves the Fantasts. De Klerk was their leader. Uh, de Klerk was in a sense a romantic character. He was, he was an attractive man, enthusiastic, spontaneous, unconstrained, not without a touch of melancholy, always needed in a hero. Uh, he wanted to make people happy, not by plans but forms, and he died when he was 31, so um, he fulfilled all the requirements for his particular role. But before he died, he uh, did a number of really uh, quite unusual buildings. This one, I believe, in 1913, uh, this is the... Um, um, uh, the Eigenhard. Uh, hou housing uh, on, uh, toward the outside of, of Amsterdam. And I will take you around it as I discovered it because it, it's full of, of delights and surprises. It's a large block uh, of apartments. Uh, so much of the work in Amsterdam was housing. Uh, housing was desperately needed in Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam, uh, Holland had the advantage of not being involved in, in the First World War. Uh, it, and and uh, so consequently, th this kind of public uh, work continued. As we go around the wall, and we see de Klerk's use of, of brickwork, uh, in, uh, both in, in, in different colors, in the, in the imaginative way he handles the windows, in the insertion of tile to form uh, uh, string courses, uh, almost sort of fluted. Actually, th it is not quite as fluted as it looks. I think your screen is, is a little dimple there. <laughs> A lot of those, at least from where I am, it, it, it looks more curved than, than it actually is. But th there are straight lines and curved lines. And th the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, particularly the silhouette up toward the sky uh, is always lively, is always moving. Now, as you come around that block, then all of a sudden there's this great sort of bomb shape on the corner to get you around the corner and to give it interest, and it must actually make some wonderful spaces inside those three apartments where uh, th those, those great, um, uh, well, not great, but those, those small uh, 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 spaces bow out uh, into the street. Uh, notice again, up toward the top in the attic, there are all of those metal uh, devices, those projecting metal brackets, and those you'll see in all of these, uh, we'll look at quite a few um, uh, apartments, Dutch apartments, uh, that's how they hoisted the furniture uh, in, into them because they, they, uh, they tended to have very narrow stairs, sometimes at an angle of 50 degrees, very, very steep, uh, and uh, uh, in order to conserve space on the inside of the building, and they were in the habit then of, of moving furniture from the outside of the building using these as hoisting devices, and, and in fact I have a slide that shows this, this is still being done today. As we keep coming around here, then we come to, this was really a sort of habitat 
Uh, it contained a post office. Um, um, it, it contained an elementary school, and I believe this is the, the elementary school. It contained a store. It was pretty much a self-contained community, the, the Eigenhard uh, housing block. Uh, this has almost sort of, um, well, this really has those sort of Never Neverland overtones that, uh, that, uh, that um, Macintosh's work had. And there probably are influences from, uh, from the Orient. After all, uh, Holland was heavily into, uh, uh, well, had colonies in, 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 in Java uh, and in Asia. Uh, and and uh, certainly these forms are almost, uh, that, that spire has an almost uh, oriental quality to it, the way it comes back on itself to, toward the bottom. And then, um, uh, well, just more views of, 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 of this uh, particular aspect of, of the Eigenhard housing. And then as you go around, notice the uh, real virtuosity of de Klerk as he, as he, uh, he he's never at a loss for, for some new uh, and different way of, of treating a wall uh, and, or of, 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 of handling a skyline. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I think this may be the clinic, uh, th this part, which is, which is inserted into the complex. And finally, when you get around here, which is where I began at this end, this is where the post office is. It was in reconstruction when I was there. That's what all the scaffolding is for. There's this form that uh, projects forward like a great ship's funnel uh, and with these extraordinary shaped windows. And on the inside then, Apparently, still pretty much the way it, it de Klerk designed it. Uh, th these are almost this is th these are almost sort of nursery colors and and uh, the sort of simple crude forms again have a sort of delightful childlike uh, simplicity. Uh, it's very it's very lighthearted. Would you change the trays, please? Uh, in addition to de Klerk, another of the uh, the second most important member of the Amsterdam School was Piet Kramer, uh, born actually three years before de Klerk. He was born in 1881, lived longer. Um, uh, he also designed a, in this case the De, 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 de Degerad a housing complex in Amsterdam. And uh, I'll take you through this quickly. Again, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, tremendous sort of invention uh, of, of, of forms, uh, making use of the plastic possibilities of brickwork, look down the, the end of this street to, uh, to the, 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 that kind of telescoped great uh, uh, tower form which, which, which comes up. There are actually two of them. Uh, as you get closer, you can, you can see th those are two separate ones. They balance each other symmetrically. Uh, Lord knows what they contain. I was never able to get into these buildings. There may be actually stairs that go up through this. And uh, uh, again, th this simply continues around the Degerad housing, showing uh, uh, the, the, uh, here a treatment of a, of a wall on the left with these, these flourishes up at the skyline for, so, th so that each house is distinguished from the next one. The way the entrance doors are used, uh, 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 almost sort of sucking back inside the, the brick. Uh, and this uh, is a very large complex which just goes on and on and on, and to which uh, uh, de Klerk also contributed. Uh, at this point then, uh, Michael de Klerk uh, here you can see furniture being hoisted in. You can see the moving van. You can see some kind of piece of furniture and a workman up there, a mover, getting ready to, take, uh, to, to, to move it in. But uh, notice the way uh, uh, de Klerk has handled the balconies here to form this kind of step arrangement uh, with uh, at the top, the, uh, uh, and each, each success.